एवरीवन वेलकम टू दी वर्ल्ड ऑफ इंग्लिश विद साक्षी खन्ना इन द कंटिन्यूअल सेशन ऑफ ग्रेड इलेवन चैप्टर वन बुक हॉर्नबिल द पोर्ट्रेट ऑफ द लेडी येस्टरडे वी हैड फिनिश्ड द समरी डिटेल समरी हार्ड वर्ड्स ऑफ द चैप्टर एंड थीम प्लस जिस्ट ऑफ द स्टोरी सो यू मस्ट हैव वेरी गुड आइडिया ऑफ द प्लॉट ऑफ द स्टोरी एज आई एक्सप्लेन विद डिटेल इंस्ट्रक्शन एंड locations as well where this scene happened these all things i gave you yesterday so i hope that today you all are with your pdf form based chapter physically textbooks are with you so that we can continue word to word explanation okay so shall we start this is a pdf form based chapter of ncert वेबसाइट आई हैव डाउनलोडेड दो आर नॉट हैविंग द बुक्स दे कैन डू द सेम बिकॉज वर्ड टू वर्ड एक्सप्लेनेशन इज मस्ट इन एवरी लिटरेचर बेस्ड चैप्टर वी कैन डू विदाउट द टेक्स्ट बिकॉज आई फोकस यू पीपल शुड क्रिएट योर ओन आंसर योर ओन क्वेश्चन आई डोंट बिलीव इन द वर्क बुक्स आई क्रिएट माई स्टूडेंट्स द क्रिएटर्स नॉट द लर्नर सो फॉर दैट यू नीड टू रीड द चैप्टर from the text itself the real text of the story so chapter 1 the portrait of lady writer mr kushwan singh as the chief character as well now first of all we will take the notice these expression in the text in for their meaning from the context okay guys continue with the reading word to word explanation line to line explanation so here we are notice first we will read the main points that is the thought was almost revolting an expanse of pure white serenity pure white beauty on the face a turning point of the light the thought was almost revolting me she was not the writer was not able to understand that somehow this lady would be very beautiful and having a husband turning point you all know accepted her seclusion with resignation he accepted everything a vertible next event is a vertible bedlam of choppings vertible means often used as intensifier means very less meaning very less important and bedlam means a state of extreme confusion when the birds are chirping what you will understand from there just the confusion only okay a sound without any sense okay so next we have frivolous rebukes frivolous rebukes means disconnecting once again frivolous rebukes we were talking about frivolous means not serious in content or attitude or behavior and rebukes an act or expression of criticism now frivolous rebukes that was a expression made by the lady towards the education of the child in the city the sagging skins of the dilapidated drum the sagging skins means beat 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 the drum okay now let us talk about the reading now i'm reading with you people you people also do the same if you really want to understand every sort of question what you will have in your final exam my grandmother and if you want to know learn the skills of creating your own answers without any help book without any workbook then you need to be serious with me and you need to read like this my grandmother like everybody's mother was an old woman she had been old and wrinkled for the 20 years that i had known her so this is a physical appearance is being explained in this first passage people said that she had once been young and pretty and even had a husband but that was hard to believe for me this author is saying that is why i told you it's an autobiography of kushwan singh my grandfather's portrait hung above the mantelpiece in the drawing room he wore a big turban and loose fitting clothes his long white beard covered the best part of his chest and he looked at least 100 years old this is the explanation of the portrait of his grandfather he did not look the sort of person who would have a wife or children he looked as if he could only have lots and lots of grandchildren because the portrait was giving the interpretation of too much old person who can't be young 
anyhow as for my grandmother being young and pretty the thought was almost revolting revolting because he was not accepting the truth because he has never seen his grandma beautiful and pretty young always seen her in the same attire since many years she had always been she often told us of the games she used to play as a child that seemed quite absurd absurd means not so good idiotic and undignified on her part and we treated it like the fables of the prophets she used to tell us the fable stories which you people have also heard from your grannies all the way in your childhood she had always been short and fat slightly bent her face was a criss cross of wrinkles running from everywhere to everywhere full face was wrinkled no we were certain she had always been as we had moving to the next page page number 4 as we had known her old he was not accepting that she she would be very beautiful and young somehow so terribly old that she could not even grown older and had stayed at the same age for 20 years she could never have been pretty now see the thought thought of the grandson and the mindset of the grandson about her grand about his grandmother sorry she could never have been pretty but she was always beautiful she hobbled that means moving around okay about the house in spotless white with one hand resting on her waist as you people see the old people one hand resting on the waist and in one hand the stick often but here to balance her stoop the bent and the other telling the beads of her rosary one hand one rosary and second hand always on the waist to take the support her silver looks her silver locks were scattered untidily over her pale now here the hair hair style he is talking about her silver locks silver locks means the grayed hair were scattered untidily over her pale puckered face puckered means fully cracked by wrinkles and her lips constantly moving in audible prayer just prayer prayer and the prayer she was doing the same yes she was beautiful she was like the landscape in the mountains and expanse of pure white of breathing peace and contentment the satisfaction on her face giving the comparison with nature the serenity beauty as we see the beauty of the landscape during winters so in the same way he compared the beauty of the lady the inner beauty we are talking about we are not talking about the physical beauty here my grandmother and i were good friends now here explanation of the relationship now what i am speaking in the first paragraph explanation of this second explanation of that i am telling you all the time what you need to do keep pen 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 or pencil in your hand and just make note of the every paragraph explanation it will be helpful for you when you are dealing with the question answers okay my grandmother and i were good friends my parents left me with her when they went to live in the city and we were constantly together she used to wake me up in the morning and get me ready for school this was a routine of grandmother in village she said her morning prayer in a monotonous sing song monotonous means the same no change regular capacity happening daily basis monotonous sing song while she bath and dressed me in the hope that i would listen and get to know it by heart that was her reason to pray all the time doing the work that she wanted grandson to recite all the prayers with her one day okay and he would learn all the things by heart as well i listened because i loved her voice 
but never bothered to learn it. This was the attitude of the author. He listened but never tried to learn it, okay, by heart, which she wanted. Then she would fetch my wooden slate. Wooden slate, you know that olden time, classes, schools, the books, notebooks, you all know that slate. Slate was there, a wooden slate was there for the children, school going children, which she had already washed and plastered. It need to be plastered all the way, all the time and washed before properly with yellow chalk, a tiny earthen ink pot and a red pen. Tie them all in a bundle and hand it to me. After a breakfast of a thick stale chapati with a little butter and sugar spread on it. This was a breakfast, regular breakfast of stale chapati, thick stale chapati with a little butter and sugar spread on it. We went to school. She carried several stale chapatis with her for the village dog. You know that now also you people are having some routine to feed the sparrows, the cows, the dogs. Okay, in the same way, she had the habit to feed the village dogs while moving on the road, going to the school campus and coming back as well. So here she had the routine to give, to feed the stray dogs. Stray dogs means dogs on the road, honorless dogs. So, they were fed by the lady and the boy and the grandson with stale chapatis. This was also her routine. My grandmother always went to school with me because the school was attached to the temple. She was carrying the child to the school and she always stayed there because the school was attached to the temple. The priest taught us the alphabet and the morning prayer. What was the routine in the school, in the classroom? They were just learning the alphabets and the morning prayer. While the children sat in rows on either side of the veranda singing the alphabet or prayer in a chorus. When the question is asked, explain the school village. Then you need to give these three, four. Now put in the paragraph the school life of the grandson in village. So one side they were learning the alphabet and the prayer and in the chorus also they practice on the daily basis. My grandmother sat inside reading the scriptures. Scriptures means the holy books and the carving on the wall. The temple wall was fully carved with the scriptures. When we had both finished, I finished my school, means the author and the lady as well. We would walk back together. This time, the village dogs would meet us at the temple door. They followed us to our home, growling, means barking, small, small intensity, not too much higher that they are not barking to bite them. They were just giving them intimation that we are waiting for you, showing their love and affection. As you have, if you have the pet, you can understand what is crawling and fighting with each other and fighting with each other to get the, to fetch the chapatis first. When they threw to them. When my parents were comfortably settled in the city, they sent for us. Now, this is the shifting, transferring of grandmother with grandson to the city side. Okay. Put the heading in this paragraph. When my parents were comfortably settled in the city, they sent for us. That was a turning point in our friendship because the things were going to change drastically. Although we shared the same room, we were living the same room, sharing in the same room. My grandmother no longer came to school with me because he was going to the, buy the motor bus. I used to go to an English school in a motor bus. There were no dogs in the streets and she took to feeding sparrows in the courtyard of our city house. As she was in the habit to feed the dogs, dogs were not found because she was not moving on the road to drop the child. The child was going to the school by school bus because it was an English school in such type of school as you are having your schooling. You have done your schooling in the same way. So there were no dogs in the street and she took to feeding sparrows in the courtyard of our city house as the 
years rolled by, passed by, we saw less of each other, very less. Because you can also understand the situation when you were so young, like uh, nurseries or uh, LKG, UKG, first, second, third grade students. You were spending more of time because you were having less of work. But as you were growing up, very less time you spent with your parents because you were fully packed with your task, assigned task. In the same way, they got very less time to spend with each other. As the year rolled by, we saw less of each other. For some time, she continued to wake me up and get me ready for school. Initially, she had the same routine. But when I came back and she would ask me what the teacher had taught you, even as you people are asked by your parents what you have done in today's school classroom. In the same way, grandma was asking to the grandson, means Mr. Kushwan Singh. But the answer was unsatisfactory for her. So she dropped that idea also. Now she was not interfering in any of the matter concerned to the schooling. Moving ahead, page number 5 here. I would tell her English words and little things of Western science and learning. What he has been taught, he shared the same. What he has been taught, the little things of Western science and learning. The law of gravity, Archimedes principle, the world being round, etc. Everything he was sharing with the granny. This made her unhappy unsatisfied. She could not help me with my lessons as she was teaching him in village. But here she got helpless. Why she got helpless? Because this education was beyond her limit. And in the village they were just talking about the religious education. There was focus over the religious education prayers and the alphabets which she understood and she helped the grandson in that. She didn't believe in the things they taught at the English school. She got unsatisfied because she didn't believe the things which I was learning. Means the child was learning and was distressed that there was no teaching about God and the scripture. When she asked, she got distressed, little depressed you can say. When she came to know that there is no teaching about God and the prayers, just the teachings of the Western science, mathematics and English only. And when it came to the music, it disturbed her a lot. One day I announced that we were being given music lesson. She was very disturbed to her, had lewd associations. It was the monopoly of halots and beggars and not meant for gentle folk. Gentle folk means for good people. It is meant for the music according to grandmother. The music what he was learning in the music class, it was made for the beggars. Okay, we were talking about the music when he was explained. He was explained about the music that there is no scripture, no prayer. And when he explained about the music class, he associated that music with the beggars and halots. It's not meant for the gentle folk means good people. Good people it's not meant for. She said nothing but her silence meant disapproval. She said nothing. Didn't utter a single word. But her silence, sometimes silence create magic to show the disapproval. She rarely talked to me after that. She stopped interacting with the boy. Yes, with the child, grandson. When I went up to university, I was given a room of my own. The common link of friendship was snapped out of the limit when he was shifted to the university and separate room to live. My grandmother accepted her seclusion with resignation. Seclusion means separated, separated, separation. He ex uh, She accepted and approved it. She rarely left her spinning wheel to talk to anyone. As she was not in the habit to talk to the people. Okay. So she had one habit of spinning the wheel all the time. So she made her that habit more prominent. More regular. From sunrise to sunset. She sat by her wheel spinning. And reciting prayers. One task. Wheel spinning and reciting prayers. Whole of the day she was spending. Just one hour she had kept for feeding the sparrows. Only in the afternoon she relaxed for a while. 
to feed these sparrows she sat in the veranda breaking the bread into little pieces and giving to the hundred of little birds collected around her creating a veritable badlam of choppings which i explain you what is veritable chopping that is no use disorder or the confusion some sound but without any sense okay so chopping bird chopping is making no sense for anyone we can't understand what they are saying some came and perched on her legs now explanation of the relationship of the mother and yes sparrows okay so in this paragraph you can get that some came and perched on her legs others on her shoulder how they were showing their love and affection towards grandmother these are the things some even sat on her head she smiled but never shoot them away shoot them away means fly fly them away it used to be the happiest half hour of the day for her half of the hour the most happiest moment of the life when she shifted to the city that was feeding the sparrows when i decided to go abroad for further studies now in this paragraph moving to abroad i was sure my grandmother would be upset but she was a wonderful lady she didn't she understood she realized the desire of the child and let her go happily i would be away for 5 years it was the span of 5 years and at her age one could never tell at what age she was she was so old but my grandmother could she accepted that reality for my betterment for my future she was not even sentimental no emotions she came to leave me at the railway station but didn't talk or show any emotion fully controlled her lips moved in prayer she was just doing the prayer in her mind and heart her mind was lost in the prayer her fingers were busy telling the beads of her rosary silently she kissed my forehead how she send the grandson for a broad education in this paragraph it has been explained silently she kissed my forehead and when i left i cherished the most imprint as perhaps the last sign of physical contact between us last sign of physical contact between us perhaps she would be alive or not as she was too old anything could happen to her but that was not so after 5 years miracle happened i came back home and was met by her at the station she came to receive the grandson as well see the power of the relationship it gives boost energy to the relationship she didn't look a day older she still had no time for words no uttering no talking and while she clasped me in her arms i could hear her reciting her prayer in the same way she just hugged the grandson even on the first day of my arrival her happiest moments were with her sparrows whom she fed no longer and with frivolous rebukes whom she fed longer and with frivolous yes frivolous i explained you what is frivolous not serious in content or attitude or behavior rebukes means criticism expression never she showed expression of criticism toward the sparrow in the evening now in the last line i just explain you once again her happiest moments were with her sparrows whom she fed longer she forgot that also and with frivolous rebukes means she showed disinterest she didn't take any attention okay to one of the most happiest moment of her day routine she forgot that she ignored that in the evening a change came over she didn't pray even second change came that she didn't pray she collected the women of the neighborhood got an old drum and started to sing for several hours she thumped the sagging she she thumped the sagging drum as we welcome the victorious people okay at the grand success in the same way the lady welcome the grandson final page of the chapter skins of dilapidated drum dilapidated means broken down condition not in good condition 
and sang of the homecoming of warriors as the warriors were welcomed in the same way grandson was welcomed by beating the drums we had to persuade her to stop to avoid overstraining at the age okay when uh, he was welcomed at that age they all were thinking those who were living with her people around and the parents even the grandson also thought to avoid overstraining that was the first time since i had known her that she didn't pray that was the only day when she didn't pray the next morning she was taken ill she fell sick it was a mild fle- fever and the doctor told us that it would go it would wither away but my grandmother thought differently she told us that her end was near she said that since only a few hours before the close of the last chapter of her life she had omitted to pray she chose to pray only not to talk anyone she was not going to waste any more time talking to us that was her routine so in the end also she decided to have the same just praying only praying we protested protested means we went against who went against parents the grandson they wanted to talk but she ignored our protest our request she lay peacefully in bed praying and telling her beads even before we could suspect her lips stopped moving and the rosary fell from the lifeless finger see the end situation of the mother a peaceful pallor spread on her face and we know that she was dead pallor means the yellowness we lifted her off the bed and as is customary lay down the ground because you all know that dead body is always lay down on the ground never on the bed in the same way they lifted her off from the bed and covered with a red shroud shroud is the white color cloth which is given to the dead body to cover the body after a few of morning we left her alone after a few of morning means the feelings feelings of sadness or the crying you can say as the as they lost their loveliest grandmother we left her alone to make arrangements for her funeral now the time for funeral of the body in the evening we went to her room with a crude stretcher to take her to be cremated crude stretcher means the small stretcher to take her to be cremated to the cemetery the sun was setting and had lit her room and veranda with a blaze of golden light so this is explanation of that particular day when she died we stopped half way in the courtyard all over the veranda and in her room right up to where she lay dead and stiff wrapped in the red shroud thousands of sparrows set scattered on the floor thousands of sparrows scattered on the floor there was no chirping how they realized that she is no more because whenever we talk about the animals we say that they are feeling less no they have feelings animal kingdom birds aquatic kingdom they all have feelings they are alive we should care the feelings of others now see how they gave the tribute all over the veranda and in her room right up to where she lay dead and stiff wrapped in the red shroud thousands of sparrows sat scattered on the floor there was no chirping we felt sorry for the birds and my mother fed some bread for them some bread crumbs for them because mother uh, grandmother was not alive now to feed them so his own mother decided to feed them she broke it into little crumbs the bread pieces the way my grandmother used to in the same way and threw it to them the sparrows took no notice of the bread they were not there to eat only because this shows that they have developed both have developed a strong relationship and that's why they didn't accept because they were also feeling bad they were missing her alive the sparrows took no notice of the bread when we carried my grandmother's corpse off corpse means the dead body 
दे फ्लू अवे क्वाइटली दे फ्लू अवे क्वाइटली नेक्स्ट मॉर्निंग द स्वीपर स्वेप द ब्रेड क्रम्स इन टू दी डस्टबिन सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द रिलेशनशिप दिस स्टोरी इज ऑल अबाउट द रिलेशनशिप ऑफ ग्रैंड सन विद ग्रैंड मदर रिलेशनशिप ऑफ द डॉग्स रिलेशनशिप ऑफ द स्पैरोज एज वेल द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट इज द स्पैरोज रिलेशनशिप इवन दो दे वर बर्ड्स ओनली एंड दे वर जस्ट कमिंग टू हैव सम क्रम्स विच एवरी वन इज डूइंग सो सी द वैल्यू ऑफ द फीलिंग्स सो वी शुड लर्न वी शुड वैल्यू द फीलिंग्स ऑफ अदर्स वी शुड वैल्यू द टाइम अफेक्शन लव डिवोशन ऑफ एवरी वन सो दिस स्टोरी इज फिनिश्ड हेयर लाइन टू लाइन एक्सप्लेनेशन फिनिश्ड हेयर बिफोर आई साइन यू ऑफ वंस अगेन आई जस्ट एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द वे आई टॉट यू द रिलेशनशिप the relationship the devotion the love affection are very important to give the strength to anything you can strengthen you can strengthen your relationship you can strengthen your education you can strengthen your learning by devoting the time okay so here in this chapter the author was very grateful to the grandmother for everything which she had done in village as well as the city and that was the energy only energy only of the relationship of both okay which was making her alive till the time of his final arrival from the abroad in reality the narrator greatest influence in his life has not been his parents in fact the lady the grandmother which has shaped the narrator from a young boy to a grown up man she has always been there for him how she took care intensive care of the baby so i just compiled my lecture today by evening you will be getting the pdf based form long question answers short question answer that you need to pen down on your notebook which will be checked the moment i arrive there in the campus and we have our traditional classroom till the time stay protected stay safe support your parents goodbye